What's going on friends? Welcome back to another property update video and in today's video I'm going to keep things nice and short and just run through some of the most important articles that I think may be of interest for yourselves and may actually help you determine some of your decisions moving forward. So anyway guys let's jump straight into this one. So we're going to start with an interesting article from Bloomberg UK where the UK's mortgage market feels the heat from rising rates. Now this is quite interesting because it shows some data from some of the biggest banks. Now NatWest has reported slower mortgage growth in the second year and Lloyds predicts the house prices will finally fall in the coming year. And I know we've all taken guesses at whether the property market will crash or whether or not. But if you think about it and we just look at what's going on in the world today, things are looking quite bleak. As mentioned here, interest rates are rising and on a monthly basis almost we're finding lenders are increasing their interest rates. I'm confident that in August we're going to see the base rate increase again. So very, very interesting stuff and something to at least be mindful of. So NatWest Group has reported net mortgage growth of 3.3 billion in the second quarter. However, it is down when compared with the same period last year. And Barclays, however, have reported near stagnant growth in home loans earlier this week. And now, one thing we do know is house prices are still rising, but the rate of growth is slowing. As I mentioned on my last property update video, we are now seeing less mortgages being taken out. And let's be honest, it's simply down to what's highlighted here. The twin pressures of increased cost of living and energy costs combined with mortgage rate increases are having an effect on people's willingness and ability to move. And this was something that I think was always gonna happen. Property prices, as we knew, especially with all the money printing that was going on during the pandemic, it meant people were stretching themselves. People were going out there and taking advantage of the stamp duty, cuts and going out and trying to buy a property but now we're seeing rates start to increase we're seeing gas electric food everything that we are utilizing on a daily basis the prices for those are going through the roof so it's something definitely to be mindful of now one more thing i just wanted to quickly touch on on this was back in september borrowers could get a five-year fixed rate mortgage at under one percent but now most rates start at three percent which is astonishing you know that's three times as much there's my mathematics skills there and in the next six months it's going to slow right down high interest rates haven't been a big factor up until now but it would definitely be one going forward moving on my friends we have a short article from the guardian and the era of soaring house prices is ending as central banks raise rates and one of the things i wanted to mention here is that according to halifax the country's biggest mortgage lender house prices are rising at an annual rate of 13 percent which is as many of you know the highest in two decades and last week the office of national statistics the ons published data for housing affordability based on the ratio of property prices to average earnings and this is where things get a little bit sad and this is something that I feel everyone's paying about. In England, the ratio was 8.7, which is really, really scary. Just to think that house prices have risen 8.7 times quicker than the average salary, which obviously is one of the reasons that many people can't get on the property ladder. And then just moving on to something that I guess adds more pain to this kind of problem of owning a home is that in the UK, the Bank of England reduced interest rates to 0.1% at the start of the pandemic. And they actually stayed there for about two years. However, the average home loan rates now are 2.9%, my friends. So not only are your wages not moving in parallel to the house prices, we're now seeing that cheap lending, if that's what we want to call it previously, that we had in the last few years, no longer exists as loan rates are now increasing and they don't seem to be stopping down. Obviously, as a government, it's trying to combat inflation and it has no appetite for a repeat of 2007. Moving on. Not to throw this back in your face, my friends, but I just want to quickly touch on something else I found in this article. I want to look at the most affordable areas to buy in the UK as yes, we know Britons are paying 8.7 times their average income. So just very, very quickly, obviously the median house price is 275K, whereas the median income is 31,800. <sighs> It really is sad to see that. However, in Wales, the ratio is six. and Scotland, we have an affordability ratio of 5.5. So I'm not sure if you guys want to move to Scotland or you want to move to Wales, but there are areas where it is more affordable. And I just want to quickly touch on this as well, because I think this would be quite useful for you guys. This is a quick infographic, shall we call it that. Screenshot it, pause it, smash up that like button while you're here, my friends, if you're finding this useful. Okay, we're going to move on. So that's my Instagram. I didn't plant that my friends but you're more than welcome to follow me there moving on to the next article <laughs> okay so this was an interesting one home buyers can get up to 21,000 discount with a simple property search trick this isn't clickbait but it's not something that is going to revolutionize how you buy houses so anyway what they're essentially doing i'm going to save you guys reading this i don't even think i highlighted it but essentially research shows on average properties being relisted 
for sale are commanding an average asking price of 380k. This is 6,805 less than the average asking price of homes listed for sales that haven't been subject to a collapse sale. So essentially, if nothing's gone through and it's been relisted, you're finding a discount on that. However, in London, let me just highlight this for you guys. In London, the relisting price reduction is at its highest with homes returning to the market offering a saving of over 21,000 to eagle-eyed home buyers. So friends, if you wanna stick around and you want to see what's being relisted, you may well save yourself £21,000. And I hope you all do. Next up, anyone interested in the help to buy equity loan scheme needs to know that this is going to close in the next three months. So here's what you need to know. First time buyers have just three months left to apply for the help to buy equity loan to fund a new build property purchase. Now it's actually been 10 years almost since it's launched. So guys, the deadline is here. Now I'm not going to run too much into this as I can feel my voice almost running out as well, but I will leave this on the screen just for a few seconds. So maybe you can screenshot it, pause it, or just take notes. Okay, so I think that was all on this one. I'm gonna move on. He's back. Now, I think many of you know my stance on this gentleman here, but Sunex vow to stop house building on Greenbelt is labeled as desperate. Experts have warned that this would significantly worsen the UK's housing crisis and push up living costs. If for anyone that doesn't know, the Greenbelt covers 12.4% of England, according to the latest figures and it's labelled as extremely precious by former Chancellor. And he claimed that more homes could be built whilst protecting our most precious landscape. However, if we just scroll down ever so slightly, Giles Wilkes, a former special advisor to Theresa May, called it pretty desperate and a regressive move. There is consensus, and this is said by David Renard, that the country needs to build 300,000 homes per year and that we are currently short of building those. Any centrally imposed numbers or locations on each local authority are not welcome as it's for councils to determine what the housing need is in their particular areas and to decide where best to locate new homes, which I think is a fair point. I think we're really, really struggling to build these homes, not just because of finding the right land, but also because of labor and materials as well. It really is difficult. And I know that because we're building our own properties as we speak today. Moving on. And finally, my friends, an article here by Philip Inman talking about the 2008 financial crisis and how life went back to normal. But will it this time? And it's quite interesting because the main consensus of this is that a bigger bailout is on the cards. And I wouldn't put it past the next people in charge because guys, you know it. The cost of food, travel, just life in general is very, very difficult. And I don't think there's enough support out there, especially for those who are vulnerable. So friends, I'm gonna leave the video there. Hopefully you find these property update videos useful. If you do, please smash up the like button. Please drop some comments down below on where you see the property market going. I am, and I'm gonna put my neck on the line here. I am predicting a further slowdown and maybe a dip in prices because there was another article, my friends, which I will probably do a separate video on where it showed some crazy statistics. So if you wanna stay tuned for that, then obviously hit up that subscribe button. And friends, until next time, thank you so much when you could have been doing anything. We each other spend a few moments with me. So until next time, my friends, thanks for watching.